Now, as healthcare workers continue to fight the rapid spread of the coronavirus, we take a look now at the work being done around patients who are in desperate need of lung transplants. We're joined by Professor Alvis Erison from the University of Stellenbosch. A very good afternoon to you and thank you so much uh, for joining us. What has been the impact uh, of COVID-19 around uh, giving uh, patients transplants? Well, good afternoon and good afternoon to the viewers. I must say in general, this is an unusual procedure. And certainly at this time, it is not a procedure that we would recommend because one of the major issues is that we've got to prevent lung rejection. And for that, we've got to give patients immunosuppressive treatment. And we know that this virus is particularly problematic in patients on immunosuppression. So you would not uh, recommend the procedure at this time. What then happens uh, to somebody that is in desperate need of a transplant? So your point is taken. And in general, we do have other medical treatments for these patients. And they can stay on these, on these treatments uh, until it's safe to do the lung transplant. I must say in general, it's not an urgent procedure, so one can wait a few months. If your lung capacity is sitting at 33%, how much time uh, does somebody like that have? I, again, I hear you, but the patient can be stabilized on uh, medication to the extent that the progression of the lung disease is not so aggressive. So in general, I would say they have at least six months. In a country like ours where you have intermittent power cuts, uh, somebody that has an oxygen tank, uh, sometimes you're not even able uh, to use that because you don't even have uh, electricity. What sort of comfort can you give uh, family members at this point who are saying, we are finding ourselves in quite a precarious and desperate situation? You're right, that is a problem in terms of not having power. So one would recommend that they have a backup oxygen cylinder and that should be able to do the job until the power is restored. Coronavirus is said to be with us for a very long time and not just this year, but well into next year as well. So what happens with these patients who need uh, to get uh, a transplant? You're right, it is a difficult scenario trying to envision, envision what the future might be. We're hoping that in parts of the country where the infection plateaus or even decreases, we could think about restoring the usual services. So I'm hoping that by early next year, such a service can resume. Professor Alvis Urison from University of Stellenbosch, thank you very much.